I always get this one particular doubt, very commonly asked question. Uh, in the coagulation pathways, what are these intrinsic and extrinsic mechanisms? What do they mean? Let us try to understand this. Look, first of all, uh, the, the real, I mean, the literal meaning is intrinsic means something which is intrinsic to the blood vessel something which is in uh, within the blood or within the blood vessel within the blood vessel means related to the blood itself whereas extrinsic means related to the tissue means outside the blood vessel that is extrinsic okay extrinsic to the blood vessel and intrinsic to the blood vessel so intrinsic to the blood vessel means related to the blood and extrinsic to the blood vessel means related to the tissue outside the blood vessels there are there is tissue and therefore that is the literal meaning of intrinsic and extrinsic uh, okay let's try to understand that let's go uh, deeper into these what is intrinsic pathway for coagulation look uh, before we understand intrinsic and extrinsic just hold your thoughts the goal of uh, these two pathways is formation of prothrombin activator which is factor 10a. So before I discuss intrinsic and extrinsic, let me just uh, have a quick word on this. We have clotting factors in our plasma, they are already there, present there, but still our blood does not clot spontaneously. Why is that? Because they are in inactive forms normally and therefore when uh, certain things happen like trauma to the blood or trauma to the tissue, one by one these factors are activated in a, in a cascading manner. And finally, when there is activation of factor 10, means 10 is converted to 10A, this 10A is called as the prothrombin activator. Then the subsequent steps will follow very immediately, quickly. Because prothrombin, fibrinogen, these clotting factors are already there in the plasma. So prothrombin activator, once it is formed, it will convert prothrombin to thrombin. Then uh, thrombin will act on fibrinogen to convert into fibrin. And then fibrin, which is initially monomers, fibrin threads, will form the crisscrossing, I mean polymerization of the fibrin with some cells enmeshed in it and a clot will be formed. But the most important core to, uh, concept to be understood is the goal of both intrinsic and extrinsic pathways is to form prothrombin activator means to convert 10 to 10A. 10A activated factor 10 is the prothrombin activator. So both these pathways intrinsic and extrinsic they have a common goal. Um, right and therefore this is called as a rate limiting step. Rate limiting step means how quickly this step, uh, this is formed, entire process, uh, I mean, it, uh, the speed of that process will depend on this particular step. You know, you have learned this rate limiting steps in various enzyme reactions. So, how much time does it take to clot, uh, form the clot, will depend on how much time is taken for the formation of 10A or for this step to occur, okay. That will determine how much time uh, it took for the clot formation. So this is rate limiting step in the clotting process. Now let's understand these two mechanisms or pathways one by one starting with intrinsic pathway for coagulation. As I said, it is intrinsic to the blood vessel. So mostly related to the blood. So imagine there is trauma to the blood itself, injury to the blood itself. After, after all, blood also is a tissue. So if there is trauma to the blood, and uh, uh, I mean or if factor 12 in this blood comes in contact with a water wettable surface like glass. I mean you collect the blood sample in a syringe and transfer it in the test tube or some bulb, glass bulb and the blood clots. A teacher will always ask you this question. It's a trick question. If the blood has made clot in this uh, 
test tube, glass test tube. What pathway was it? Intrinsic or extrinsic? Invariably, students, students would say extrinsic because they think it is outside the body, so it must be extrinsic. Extrinsic. No, no. It is intrinsic pathway for coagulation. The clot that forms in the test tube, the, cl uh, the clot that forms in glass bulbs or syringes, this is intrinsic pathway for clotting. I mean, the clot was formed by intrinsic pathway for clotting. Because factor 12, which is the intrinsic factor to the blood, very much an intrinsic thing in the blood, this gets activated and that triggers the clotting process. Okay, So, what is the trigger for clotting? Based on that, we call it intrinsic or extrinsic. So, trauma to the blood and there is activation of factor 12. 12 to 12A. 12A is activated factor 12. Okay, Or blood comes in contact with a water wettable surface like glass or blood comes in or factor 12 comes in contact with sub endothelial collagen. See, this is a blood vessel. Blood is flowing and in this blood there is factor 12 in inactive form. Now, because of some injury, endothelium, endothelial lining gets eroded and the sub endothelial collagen gets exposed. So, factor 12 comes in contact with this sub endothelial collagen and then it gets activated. This is intrinsic pathway for coagulation. When 12 gets converted to 12A, activated. And then it triggers the further and further factors to get activated. And finally, uh, factor 10 will be converted to 10A. Your prothrombin activator has been formed. And then the subsequent steps and the clot will form. Right. So that was intrinsic pathway for coagulation. So one more time, if you collect the blood in a syringe, glass syringe or plastic syringe, uh, and you transfer it to the test tube, what type of clotting mechanism it is? It is intrinsic pathway for coagulation. Okay. And why is that? Because the uh, trigger, the initiation of the clotting proce process was very much within the blood itself, inside the blood, intrinsic to the blood. And what was it? The factor 12. It, get acti it getting activated. So that trigger within the blood itself or inside the blood vessel and therefore the clotting got initiated then it is intrinsic pathway for coagulation. So uh, blood clotting outside the body in a test tube is intrinsic pathway for coagulation. Talking about extrinsic pathway for coagulation when there is tissue trauma. Now look this is also interesting. Uh, you never reach the blood vessel directly. I mean you have to injure the tissue to reach the blood vessel. So, invariably there is going to be a tissue trauma, tissue injury and then you reach the blood vessel. Blood vessel also gets ruptured and the bleeding starts and then the clot forms. Now, this time it would be mainly the extrinsic pathway for coagulation because tissue trauma, injury to the tissue, I mean imagine you prick the finger to collect the blood sample for your uh, lab procedure. You injure the tissue to reach the blood vessels, right? So tissue trauma occurs first and then tissue trauma causes release of tissue thromboplastin factor 3, the clotting factor, tissue thromboplastin. And that tissue thromboplastin then in the presence of factor 7A, activated factor 7 or 7A, and presence of calcium uh, converts factor 10 to 10A. Your prothrombin activator formed and the subsequent steps will follow after that this. So in this case, this will be the extrinsic pathway for coagulation. Something extrinsic to the blood vessel has triggered the clotting process. Extrinsic to the blood vessel is uh, tissue. And trigger, therefore, is in the tissue in the form of tissue thromboplastin. Okay, this thromboplastin 
uh, has been also found inside the blood vessels, but we are talking of tissue thromboplastin here. Okay, and therefore that's extrinsic. Please understand here that it was a mix. In this case, it can so happen that you injure the tissue. So tissue trauma, there was release. Look, this is a blood vessel and it is surrounded by this tissue. All right. You injured the tissue. So tissue thromboplastin definitely released. And this tissue thromboplastin then acts on this factor 7 inside the blood vessel. This 7A is attached to the blood vessel, to the endothelial cells. So this tissue thromboplastin then acts on this factor 7 to convert it into 7A and then 7A in the presence of uh, calcium, it will convert, uh, all these things will convert 10 to 10A. This is extrinsic pathway for coagulation. But there was, there is also possibility of factor 12 over here coming in contact with subendothelial collagen and forming the clot uh, that is by intrinsic pathway that also is possible. However, this particular pathway is extrinsic pathway for coagulation because the trigger, the initiator was extrinsic to the blood, extrinsic to the blood vessel. So, this is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. Even if you are collecting the, uh, imagine I am, this is giving the example. Suppose you are collecting the blood sample by a syringe. When you insert the syringe, actually you are traumatizing the tissue also to some extent. And then you collect the blood sample and collect it in a glass test tube. Now, there is a, th th this is a dichotomy. The clot that is formed in the test tube was because of the activation of factor 12. Factor 12 came in contact with the glass and it got activated. So this is the clot formed in the test tube will be intrinsic pathway, by intrinsic pathway. But you have injured the tissue also at that site and therefore there will be some uh, extent of extrinsic pathway for coagulation also taking place at that site where you made the puncture. Okay, So therefore this will be a mix but you have to understand clot formed here will be extrinsic uh, pathway for coagulation and clot formed in the test tube after you collected the blood will be intrinsic uh, by intrinsic pathway for coagulation. So uh, very fascinating topic and complicated therefore you must understand this clearly. Let me tell you the application of these things now. Application, what is the applicability? Uh, the applicability is in the form of siliconized containers. Look, uh, we have to use certain anti-clotting mechanisms also when we collect the blood samples and we want, want to store the blood. We have to uh, provide some anticoagulant mechanism. One mechanism uh, is in the form of siliconized containers. That is a bag which is coated by with silicon from inside. There is a silicon coating to this bag from inside. And now you collect the blood sample in this bag. There is a factor 12 in the blood, fine, but it cannot be activated. Look, this factor 12 cannot have contact activation. When it, when it came in the contact with glass in the test tube, it was a contact activation which is not possible because of this inert material, the silicon. And therefore, factor 12 cannot get activated if the container is coated, if the bag is coated from inside by the silicon. So, uh, if 12 is not activated, clot will not form. So, that is uh, one application of all this understanding. Uh, another important thing to be understood or application of this is in the form of thrombus formation. Look, uh, we said just now that normally the blood does not clot spontaneously, okay? Because uh, although clotting factors are very much present in the plasma, they are in inactive forms. Unless they are activated, the clot will not form, correct? But in some instances, spontaneous clot formation takes place and it is called as thrombus formation, okay? What is the reason for thrombus formation? Look, uh, because of atherosclerotic process, let us say because of cholesterol crystals deposition in the tunica intima of the blood vessels, 
often it happens that the endothelium is damaged the endothelium lining is damaged and uh, sub endothelial collagen okay the collagen gets exposed which are which was beneath this endothelium and factor 12 comes in contact with this sub endothelial collagen and it gets activated spontaneously yes and when that forms the clot in this place it would be called as a thrombus okay so reasons for myocardial infarction and blockage of coronary vessels such spontaneous thrombus formation blood vessels were or their intima tunica intima and the endothelium was damaged because of the cholesterol crystals or because of some oxidizing processes and sub endothelial uh, collagen got exposed so remember intrinsic pathway for coagulation has these triggers when there is trauma to the blood itself it can activate factor 12 or if factor 12 comes in contact with a water wettable surface like glass it gets activated by coming in contact with the uh, this surface or when factor 12 comes in contact with sub endothelial collagen endothelial lining of the blood vessels it, it can be damaged at times and this collagen beneath this endothelium will get exposed and 12 will come in contact with it. So, when this triggers, when 12 triggers the uh, clotting, it's intrinsic and uh, factor 3 triggers clotting means uh, tissue injury, tissue uh, release of tissue thromboplastin and when this activates factor 7 and then factor 10 is activated, it's called as extrinsic pathway for coagulation the trigger was outside the blood vessel. So, let me just for the sake of definition define it once again. Intrinsic pathway for coagulation, what is it? When there is trauma to the blood or when factor 12 comes in contact with glass or with subendothelial collagen, glass or subendothelial collagen and it is activated, factor 12 gets activated because of these and when that results in clotting, it is called as intrinsic pathway for coagulation. What is extrinsic pathway for co coagulation? Define it. When there is a tissue trauma, so trigger is outside the blood, outside the blood vessel, extrinsic to the blood vessel, that is in the tissue. When there is tissue trauma and there is release of tissue thromboplastin factor 3, and when that triggers clotting, it is called as extrinsic pathway for coagulation. That should be very, very clear. Now, after this, you just remember these steps because I have written quickly only the defining uh, steps, important steps in this. Now, if you want to uh, complete the answer, long answer question, then just write down the steps like 12A will act on 11 to convert it into 11A and then so on and so forth, which I have not written here. So, just by heart those 13, 14 clotting factors and add those steps here, complete the steps, your answer will be ready, okay. So, that is intrinsic versus extrinsic pathway for coagulation.